everyone. Myself, Dr. P. Saumya, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering College. In this session, I am going to discuss about introduction to batteries and dry cell. In this session, I am going to cover introduction to batteries, classification of batteries, dry cell and its applications. Dry cell and its applications. History of batteries. So, in 1780, in 1780, an Italian biologist called Luigi Galvani, Luigi Galvani discovered that when two different types of metals, when two types of different, two different types of metal came into contact with the dead frog's leg, dead frog's leg, an electrical current ran between them and caused the leg to twitch. An electrical current ran between them and caused the leg to twitch. So this he is Lugi Galvani. He is invented when he is discovered when two different types of metals came into contact with the dead frogs leg. An electrical current ran between them and it is caused the leg twitch. Leg twitch. So, this is said to mark the first discovery of the principle behind the batteries. This is, this is said to be uh, first discovery of principle behind the batteries. So, based on these findings, based on these findings, the fr a friend and fellow scientist, friend and fellow scientist, uh, he, he was Alexandro, Alessandro Volta. Alessandro Volta believed, observed, believed and observed electrical phenomena were caused by electrical phenomena were, were was caused by two different metals. Two different metals joined together by a moist intermediary, moist condition. So he he observed that when two different metals when two different metals join together uh, join together in moist intermediary the electric current is passed so this is the observation of alessandro volta in 1800 in 1800 volta invented the first true battery the first true battery storing and releasing a charge through chemical reaction storing and releasing a charge through chemical reaction instead of physically instead of physically which came to be known as voltaic pile which came to known as voltaic pile so this voltaic pile is discovered by alessandro volta alessandro volta after this discovery many many different uh, various batteries are discovered in different years. So, these are the different batteries which are discovered in different years. So, after successive improvements in battery technology, uh, after successive improvement in battery technology, facilitated major electrical advances from early scientific studies. Early scientific studies to raise the telegraphs, to, to rise of telegraphs and telephones, these eventually leading to portable computers, mobile phones, electrical cars and many other electrical devices. After these successive improvements, so major applications have been developed in uh, computers, portable uh, batteries are improved and these are used in portable computers, mobile phones, electric cars and etc. So, what is battery? What is the definition of battery? Battery is an arrangement of several electrochemical cells. Battery is an arrangement of several electrochemical cells connected in series. Connected in series that can be used as a direct electric current that is DC current. Direct electric 
current. So the battery is an arrangement of several electrochemical cells connected in series that can be used as a source of direct electric current. So battery is an arrangement of se several electrochemical cells. But what is cell? Cell is contains one anode, one cathode and one electrolyte. What is cell? Cell should contain anode, cathode and also electrolyte. Whereas battery is having several anodes and cathodes. Whereas battery is contains several anodes and several cathodes. So this is the difference between cell and battery. Cell is cell contains only one anode and one cathode. Whereas battery is having several anodes and cathodes. So battery is the arrangement of several electrochemical cells connected in series which can be used as a source of direct electric current. So, what are the requirements of battery? A useful battery should fulfill the following requirements. The following requirements. It should be light and compact for easy transport. It should be light and compact for easy transport. Second one is it should have long life. It should have long life both when it is being used and when it is not used. It should have long life both when it is being used and when it is not used. Third one is the voltage of the battery should not vary appreciably during the, its use. Means the voltage of battery should not vary during the usage. During the usage of the battery. So these are the requirements of battery and definition of battery. So types of batteries. By batteries are again divided into three types. So first one is primary battery or primary cells. Second one is secondary battery that is secondary cells. Third one is flow battery or fuel cell. Flow battery or fuel cell. In this chapter we will uh, learn about only primary cells and secondary cells. So what is primary battery? The primary battery in these cells, the electrode and electrode, the electrode and the electrode reactions cannot reverse by passing external electrical energy. In this, the electrode and electrode reactions cannot be reversed by passing external electrical energy. When we pass electrical energy through this battery, the, the electrolyte, electrode reactions and the electrode is not reversible. So, this type of uh, battery is called as primary battery. Here, the electrode reactions are not reversible. Electrode reactions are not re reversible. Irreversible. Not reversible. In case of primary cells. The reaction occur only once after use and they become dead. The reactions occur only once and after use the battery can be become dead. The battery become dead. So therefore they have, they are non-rechargeable and are meant for single use. Are meant for single use and to be discarded after use. The simple definition of primary battery is it is a non-rechargeable battery and it is meant for single use. After usage, it should be discarded. It should be discarded. The electrode and electrode reactions are not reversible. Not reversible. The reactions occurs only once. After that, the battery become dead. The battery become dead. This type of batteries are called as primary battery. Primary battery is a non-rechargeable battery. And the reactions, electrode reactions are not reversible. And this is used for single use. This is meant for single use. Examples of dry cell are, examples of dry cell are, dry, sorry, examples of primary battery is dry cell, mercury cell. Here, another uh, example is also there, voltaic pile, Daniel cell, dry cell, aluminum manganese uh, battery. Lithium sulfur battery, zinc carbon battery, 
zinc air battery and magnesium air battery so these are examples of primary batteries or primary cells Sec secondary battery and secondary cell what is secondary battery and sec or secondary cells these cells in these cells the electrode reactions can be reversed the electrode reactions can be reversed by passing an external electrical energy and external electrical energy therefore they can be recharged therefore they can be recharged by passing electric current and used again and again means multi cycle use so these are also called as storage cells and accumulators storage cells and accumulators secondary cells are in this secondary cells electrode reactions are reversible electrode reactions are reversible by passing external energy therefore they can be recharged by passing electrical energy and it it can be used again and again and this is also called as storage cells or accumulators the secondary batteries also called as storage batteries and accumulators secondary batteries are the batteries in which uh, the electrode reactions are reversible and these are rechargeable batteries and this can be used for multi cycle these are meant for multi cycle use so these are also called as storage cells are accumulators so examples of uh, these uh, secondary batteries lead acid storage cell lead acid storage cell nickel cadmium cell and also lithium ion battery lithium sulfur battery sodium ion battery sodium sulfur battery lead acid battery and also nickel cadmium nickel iron nickel metal hydride batteries and also magnesium cells redox flow so these all are examples of examples of secondary batteries in this lesson we will uh, we will discuss about uh, lead acid battery and in lithium ion battery in electrochemistry and corrosion so in the flow battery so what is the flow battery or fuel cell in these cells all reaction and products all reactants products and electrolytes are continuously passing through the cell are continuously passing through the cell this type of cell is called as flow battery or fuel cell in this chemical energy gets converted into electrical energy in this chemical energy is converted into electrical energy so what is primary battery primary battery in this these in these cells the electrode reactions are not reversible and non rechargeable secondary batteries it electrode reactions of secondary batteries are reversible and rechargeable battery and it can be used for multi cycle uses and flow batteries in these cells reactants products electrolytes are continuously passing through the cell so these are about types of battery types of battery so next one is dry cell or lecklange cell dry cell or lecklange cell so this is a example of primary battery this is example of primary battery this is example of primary battery means it is in this the cell reactions are not reversible and this is non rechargeable battery it can be discarded after single use so this is the dry cell is the example of primary battery so dry cell means the cell without fluid component without fluid component cell means if in cell we should have anode cathode and electrolyte electrolyte so cell means it should have anode cathode and electrolyte so dry cell means the cell without fluid component usually electrolyte electrolyte in uh, liquid state so, but in the case of dry cell the electrolyte also not liquid it is a it is a some paste it is 
is in the form of paste. So that's why this uh, cell is called as dry cell. So the cell is without fluid component. Dry cell is the cell without fluid component. This is a dry cell. Dry cell. In this, anode is anode is zinc. Anode is zinc that is denoted by Z N. This anode is zinc and cathode is graphite. Cathode is graphite. Graphite rod. Cathode is graphite rod. Graphite rod is nothing but carbon. Graphite is a carbon allotrope. Graphite is the carbon allotrope and we can write as carbon. The cathode is graphite rod or carbon and electrolyte. Electrolyte is moist paste. Moist paste. Moist paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. Ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. So, the electrolyte is moist paste. It is having moisture but not in, it is not in liquid state. It is in a paste form. So, the electrolyte is moist paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. Moist paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. So, what is anode? In, in this, we have, we can, we are using anode is zinc, cathode is graphite rod and electrolyte is moist paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. So, anode is zinc, cathode is graphite rod and this is moist paste of ammonium chloride, MnO2 and carbon. Ammonium chloride and carbon. So, the dry cell also called as anode is zinc, cathode is, cathode is uh, graphite rod. So, this dry cell is also called as zinc carbon cell. Anode is zinc. Cathode is carbon. So, this cell is also called as zinc carbon cell. So, the EMF from this dry cell we can get 1.5 volts. The EMF of this dry cell is 1.5 volts. Dry cell. It, this is the construction of dry cell. Construction of dry cell. Construction of dry cell. Dry cell consists of dry cell consists of cylindrical zinc container which acts as anode. Cylindrical zinc container. Here cylindrical zinc container is there. So this is zinc. This is acts as anode. Zinc is acts as anode. So here this is positive terminal. This is negative terminal. Positive terminal, negative terminal. A graphite rod displaced in the center. Graphite rod displaced in the center. Here this is graphite rod. This is displaced in the center. The graphite rod does not touch the base. The graphite rod does not touch the base and it acts as cathode. It acts as cathode. Graphite rod displaced in the center without touching the base and it acts as cathode. The graphite rod is surrounded by powdered MnO2 and carbon. The graphite rod, the graphite rod is surrounded. This the graphite rod is displaced in the cylindrical zinc container without, without touching the base and this graphite rod, this Graphite rod surrounded by the zinc uh, MN powdered MnO2 and carbon. Powdered MnO2 and carbon. MnO2 plus carbon. So, the remaining space between cathode and anode is filled with the paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. So, this is this is anode. This is anode. And this is cathode. This is cathode. So anode, anode is zinc cylindrical container and this cathode is displaced in the uh, bottom of the this container and this is uh, this cathode is surrounded by powdered MnO2 and carbon and we between this anode and cathode the 
this is filled with the paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. The remaining space between the anode and cathode is filled with the ammonium chloride, paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. And the graphite rod is fitted with a metal cap, uh, the cylinder, and it is sealed with the top, uh, sealed at the top with the pitch. So, this is a fitted with a metal cap. This is fitted with a metal cap and it is uh, it is sealed at the top with a pitch. It is sealed with a, at the top with a pitch seal. Pitch seal. Here this is the zinc rod, zinc cylinder, cylindrical zinc container and in this cathode graphite rod is displaced without touching the bottom and in this graphite rod is surrounded by uh, powdered MnO2 and carbon. This uh, two in between, the space between cathode and anode filled with the uh, paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. The graphite rod is fitted with a metal cap and the cylinder is sealed at the top with a pitch, pitch seal. This is the construction of dry cell. So, the reactions takes place in the cell or what is dry cell? In this dry cell means it, it converts chemical energy into electrical energy. So, here chemical reactions are takes place in the dry cell. So, we know that anode, anode is zinc, cathode is graphite rod that is carbon graphite rod that is carbon. So, at anode what is happening? At anode oxidation. At anode oxidation takes place. At cathode reduction is takes place. At cathode reduction is takes place. So, what is anode? Zinc. Zinc can undergo oxidation and form Zinc plus 2 and 2 electrons. Zinc plus 2 and 2 electrons. Zinc is an anode, so it can undergo oxidation and form zinc plus 2 and 2 electrons. So, what is cathode? Carbon. So, carbon does not undergo any reaction, but this graphite rod is surrounded by uh, powdered MnO2 and carbon. That MnO2 at cathode, at cathode reduction is takes place, that MnO2 reacts with water. Water where it is present? Moist paste. So, we are using moist paste. So, in that moisture is there. So, that water is reacted with MnO2 and forms 2Mn2O3 2Mn2O3 plus 2OH minus 2Mn2O3 plus 2OH minus OH minus from this overall reaction in the dry cell is zinc plus we can write zinc plus 2 MnO2 plus these electrons can be cancelled out 2 H2O gives rise to zinc plus 2 plus 2 MnO3 plus 2 OH minus this is the overall reaction in dry cell so in this we are having Ammonium chloride, ammonium chloride. This ammonium chloride reacts with these two OH minus and forms two ammonia, two ammonia plus two moles of chlorine and two moles of water and two moles of water. So ammonium chloride, which is present in between um, anode and cathode, this can react with the OH minus and forms ammonia gas and forms ammonia gas. Ammonia gas. Due to the reaction of ammonia gas, due to this reaction, ammonia gas evolves. Ammonia gas evolves and disrupts the current flow of current flow in dry cell. Disrupts the current flow in dry cell. So, this can be prevented by the, this can be prevented by the reaction of ammonia with zinc plus 2 ions. Ammonia with zinc plus 2 ions to form complex. To form complex. So, in this, this zinc plus 2 can react with 
two ammonias which are evolved in the uh, dry cell and Cl minus two Cl minus. So we will get zinc co ammonium complex two ammonia zinc. This is the zinc complex zinc complex diamine dichloro zinc complex. So due to the reaction of ammonium chloride and hydroxide ions, we will get ammonia gas. So this will disrupt the current flow in the dry cell. This is prevented by the reaction of uh, this ammonia with uh, zinc plus two ions which are present in the dry cell. So these are reacted with uh, ammonia and uh, zinc is reacted with ammonia and chlorine I atoms, uh, chlorine ions and forms zinc complex that is diamine dichloro zinc uh, complex. So these are the some of commercially available uh, dry cells. These are commercially available dry cells. Commercially available dry cells. So what uh, dry cell means he, these ha cells are having cells does not have any fluid component. So some uh, uh, names are heavy duty energy like the Duracell. These are the some of um, commercially available uh, dry cells which are used in our daily life. So these are the applications of dry cells. Applications of dry cells. It can be used in watch. This is dry cell watch and ear pods. It can be used in calculators and it is used in toys and transistor, transistor radios, transistor radios. So what are the applications? It can be used in toys, transistor radios, calculators, watches and hearing aids also torch lights. We can use in torch lights. These are not uh, rechargeable batteries. These are only used for single use. If uh, after single use, we, we should be discarded. So applications of dry cellar, it can be used in toys, transistor radios, calculators, watches and hearing aids. So this is about uh, dry cell construction, reactions and applications. Thank you so much. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.